Communism. So the year is 1959. Communism is on rise. The Red Menace is a real threat to American democracy. The space race is currently on, and we're trying to be the first nation to get people to the moon. The Cold War is in full swing. And right now, the Soviets are trying to get to the moon, and they're trying to build a base there. But they're not gonna build a base before we build one, are they? Which brings us to what we're gonna talk about today, Project Horizon. Now, Project Horizon is a relatively little known idea. It was more of a concept really, because ultimately what it was is it was the United States Army that was trying to plan building a lunar base accompanied with living quarters, tactics for using on the moon, and nuclear weapons. Because if anyone's gonna be the first people to put nukes on the moon, it's gonna be us. Obviously it didn't happen. This was published in 1959. It was originally classified as secret, but it was declassified September of 1961. So let's talk about it. All right, so Project Horizon, volume one, summary and supporting considerations. Proposal to establish a lunar outpost. Reference letter to chief of ordinance from chief of research and development. Subsequent to approval by the chief of staff of reference, representatives of the Army Ballistic Missiles Agency indicated that supplementary guidance would be required concerning the scope of the preliminary investigation specified in the reference. I envision expeditious development of the proposal to establish a lunar outpost to be of critical importance to the U.S. Army of the future. In this time of limited budget, additional monies are unavailable. Current programs have been scrutinized rigidly and identifiable fat trimmed away. I leave it at your discretion to determine the source and the amount of money to be devoted to this purpose. Signed, Arthur G. Trudeau. Whoa. Lieutenant General, a three-star, wrote, like, signed off on this. It was like, yeah, I think we need to build a base on the moon so that we can put nukes up there and we gotta be the first people to do it because the Russians are gonna do it if we don't. Well, obviously, like I said, this got declassified in September 1961, so it's no longer a classified document. The general idea of this is that they felt there was a requirement for a manned military outpost on the moon. They said that the lunar outpost was required to develop and protect potential United States interests on the moon because if anyone has interests on the moon, it's the United States. They wanted to develop techniques in moon-based surveillance of the Earth and space, in communications relays, and in operations on the surface of the moon and like ways to operate, to serve as a base for exploration of the moon, for further explanation into space and for military operations on the moon if required, and to support scientific investigations on the moon. The operational concepts of this were that initially the outpost will be of sufficient size and contain sufficient equipment to permit the survival and moderate constructive activity of a minimum number of personnel, about 10 to 20 people. So they wanted people to be able to live up there and stay there and sustain themselves. It needs to be designed for expansion of facilities if need be, resupply and rotation of personnel to ensure maximum extension of sustained occupancy. It should be designed to be self-sufficient for as long as possible without outside support. Well, because obviously it takes a lot of time to get there and takes a lot of time to get back. In the location and design of the base, consideration will be given to operation of a triangulation station. Kind of a station that's like a triangle. They want the station to be a triangle of a moon to earth based line space surveillance system, facilitating communications with and observing of the earth. The primary objective is to establish the first permanent manned installation on the moon. Incidental to this mission will be the investigation of the scientific, commercial, and military potential of the moon. If we're gonna put a base up there, well, we're gonna figure out ways that the military can capitalize on that. Well, the national policy on outer space includes the objective of development and exploiting U.S. outer space capabilities as needed to achieve scientific, military, and potential purposes. The establishment of a manned base of operations on the moon has tremendous military and scientific potential. The full extent of the military potential cannot be predicted, but it is probable that observation of the Earth and space vehicles from the moon will prove to be highly advantageous. By using a moon-to-Earth baseline, space surveillance by triangular Triangulation promises great range and accuracy. The employment of moon-based weapon systems against Earth or space targets may also prove to be feasible and desirable, like a space laser. Moon-based military power will be a strong deterrent to war because of the extreme difficulty from the enemy point of view of eliminating our ability to retaliate. We talked about air power and also desert power, but what about moon power? Just saying, just saying. The situation is reversed if hostile forces are permitted to arrive first. They can militarily counter our landings and attempt to deny us politically the use of their property. They were concerned that the Russians were gonna get there and build a base first. So they're like, we have to do this. We need to be the first 
to build a lunar base. The scientific advantages are equally difficult to predict, but are highly promising. Study of the universe, of the moon, and the space environment will all be aided by scientific effort on the moon. Perhaps the most promising scientific advantage is the usefulness of a moon base for further explorations into space. Materials on the moon itself may be proved to be valuable and commercially exploitable. Maybe they have some valuable rocks up there we can use to build super-powered nuclear vehicles or something. Organizational concept. The establishment of the outpost should be a special project having authority and priority similar to the Manhattan Project in World War II. Whoa, easy. Once established, the lunar base will be operated under the control of a unified space command. You mean like the Space Force? Space or certainly that portion of outer space encompassing the Earth and the Moon will be considered a military theater. Wow, they were thinking about this stuff back in the 1950s. The control of all United States military forces by unified commands is already established and military operations in space should be no exception. Degree of urgency. This is the reason why we need to do this and why we need to do this now. To be the second to the Soviet Union in establishing an outpost on the moon would be disastrous to our nation's prestige and in turn to our democratic philosophy. Although it is contrary to the United States policy, the Soviet Union in establishing the first permanent base may claim the moon or critical areas thereof for its own. Then a subsequent attempt to establish an outpost by the United States might be considered and propagandized as a hostile act. We can't have that. We can't let that happen. The Soviet Union in propaganda broadcast has announced the 50th anniversary of the present government, 1967, will be celebrated by Soviet citizens on the moon. The National Space Policy Intelligence estimate is that the Soviets could land on the moon as early as 1968. The maintenance and supply effort to support a lunar base will be high by present standards. Continued delivery of equipment and means of survival will be required, and each delivery will be costly. Every conceivable solution for minimizing the logistic effort it must be explored. Maximum use of any oxygen or power source on the moon through regenerative or other techniques must be exploited. Means of returning safely to Earth must be available to the occupants of the outpost. Bro. Training and personnel implications. The number of personnel on the base itself will be quite small and at least initially, but the total number of personnel supporting the effort may be quite large. Until further study is made, a realistic qualitative and quantitative personnel estimate cannot be provided. We don't really know how many people we're going to need for this base, but we need people for this base. God damn it, Gump! You're a goddamn genius! The training requirements of Earth-based support personnel would resemble those of personnel in long-range ballistic missile units and radar tracking systems. For the relatively small number of personnel actually transported to the moon base, training requirements will be exacting in many fields. Additional items and requirements. A complete family of requirements and supporting research and development projects will be necessary to develop all of the supporting equipment to establish a lunar base. Very high thrust boosters, space vehicles, intermediate space stations, space dwellings, space clothing and survival gear will be required. They were like legitimately prepping. They're like, we got to figure this out because if the Russians beat us, this is bad. We got to build a base on the moon and we got to build it now. We got to figure out ways to sustain it. We got to figure out to get supplies to and from it. We got to get there and we got to figure this out. Currently, the army is engaged in determining objectives and requirements for outer space operations. The most challenging and perhaps the most urgent objective is that of establishing a manned lunar outpost on the moon. This lunar base is needed to protect United States state's interest on the moon, develop techniques in moon-based surveillance of the Earth and space in communications relay and operations on the surface of the moon. When established, the lunar station will be utilized as a base for exploration of the moon, further explorations into space, and for military operations if required. The base is also needed to support scientific investigations on the moon. It is considered of the utmost importance that the moon be first occupied by the U.S. so that the U.S. can deny Soviet territorial, commercial, or technological claims. If a permanent base can be established established first by the United States, the prestige and psychological advantage to the nation will be invaluable. You are therefore requested as a matter of urgency to make a preliminary investigation to determine the probable means and techniques of accomplishment and to develop a plan including estimated time scheduling and costs for establishing a lunar base by the quickest means possible. The investigation should include a determination of the feasibility of landing a manned vehicle by 1966 and establishing a permanent base as soon thereafter as possible. 
This preliminary investigation will be the first of a series of steps to establish a lunar base program and will be used by the general staff as background information for making a firm proposal to higher authority. If approved, the lunar base program would become a major part of the national space program. Your investigation will be classified secret and will be made known only to those persons required to have knowledge of the project. Jeez, this is all signed off by Lieutenant Colonel Donald E. Simon in 1961. Wow, it goes, it goes on further. It says no contacts with agencies outside the army will be made until after the result of the preliminary investigation have been presented to the Department of Defense. The findings of the initial investigation will be made through my office to the chief of staff. No additional distribution will be made and no public release will be made concerning this project. Because of the sensitive aspects of this proposal, it is essential that this project not be disclosed prematurely. Your plan of accomplishment should include full utilization of the other technical services and combat arms to the extent feasible and necessary. In the accomplishment of this investigation, the chief of engineers will be responsible for the design, construction, and maintenance of the base, and the chief signal officer will be responsible for communications and other support for which he is peculiarly qualified. It's a strange way to phrase that. Peculiarly qualified. All right, so this thing was written in four chapters. Chapter one was the introduction. Chapter two was technical considerations and plans. Chapter three, management and planning considerations. And then chapter four was non-technical supporting considerations. They also had three appendixes. Appendix A was policy of the United States with respect to activities in space. They had an entire appendix on that. Appendix B, legal and political implications. And Appendix C was technical services support capabilities. Bro, I didn't realize this was going to be an extensive deep dive, but buckle up because it's about to get real crazy. All right, so the justification. The broad requirement is they want to put a lunar base on the moon because they think that it's going to provide a basis for further explorations and operations on the lunar surface as well as supporting capability for other U.S. operations in space. Here's the, the key. What's the purpose of a lunar outpost? Their purpose, according to what they thought, was the establishment of a manned U.S. outpost on the moon will demonstrate the United States scientific leadership in outer space, support scientific explorations and investigations, extend and improve space reconnaissance and surveillance capabilities and control of space, extend and improve communications and serve as a communications relay station, provide a basic and supporting research laboratory for space research and development activity, develop a stable low gravity outpost for use as a launch site for deep space exploration, provide an opportunity for scientific exploration and development of a space mapping and survey system, provide emergency staging areas, rescue capability or navigational aid for other space activity. Oh man. So big broad concept. The scientific implications of us building a lunar base were pretty big because they believed that we could do tons of research, tons of development of things up there. If we had an actual outpost to gather materials, we could learn a lot about the moon and also space in general. There was also political implications because they felt that the United States was the leading scientific and political leadership of the world. We needed to be the first people that got up there. If we weren't the first people that got up there and built a base on it, they felt like it would hinder everyone's perspective of us. The security implications. They wanted to establish offensive and defensive standard operating procedure for the moon because maybe we could end up having a war on the moon or a war in space. We needed to be the first people to be prepared for that. So they said in here, it said the total cost of the eight and one half year program presented in this study is estimated to be $6 billion. This is an average of approximately $700 million per year. These figures are a valid appraisal and while preliminary, they represent the best estimates of experienced non-commercial agencies of the government. The implications of the future importance of such an operation should be compared to the fact that the average annual funding required for Project Horizon would be less than 2% of the current annual defense budget. Bro, back then, $6 billion was so much money. I mean, that's so much money now, but like $6 billion back then is probably like unfathomably more now. Ultimately, the lunar outpost proposed for Project Horizon was supposed to be a permanent facility that was capable of supporting around 12 people that were engaged in continuous operations. They didn't have an exact location for where they wanted to put it yet, but they did say that for a number of technical reasons, such as temperature and rocket vehicle energy requirements, the area bounded by plus or minus 20 degrees latitude longitude of the optical center of the moon seems favorable. Within this area, three particular sites have been chosen which appear to meet more detailed requirements of landing space, surface conditions, communications, and proximity to varied lunar terrain. A rather extensive lunar mapping program is already underway in order to satisfy existing requirements in astro geodesy. They were already putting together maps. The design of the facilities would be dominated by the influence of a couple different things. The lunar environment and the space transportation system capabilities. A 
A few of the more pronounced primary lunar environmental parameters are listed below. Essentially, no atmosphere. Surface gravity is approximately one-sixth of Earth's gravity. The radius of approximately 1,000 miles is about one-fourth of that on Earth. Surface temperature variations between a lunar day and night of plus 248 degrees Fahrenheit to minus 202 degrees Fahrenheit, which means that if you don't have stuff that's super durable, it's just going to get destroyed. Maximum subsurface temperature at equator is negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit, which like you look at Antarctica, it gets down to like that. And that's like subsurface temperature. That's crazy. Oh, here is their plan. So the first two men will arrive on the lunar surface in April of 1965. They will be guided to an area in which the cargo buildup for future constructions already started. Their landing vehicle will have an immediate return to earth capability. However, it's intended that they will remain in the area until the arrival of the advance party or of the construction crew. During their stay, they will live in the cabin of their lunar vehicle, which will be provided with necessary life essentials and power supplies. For an extended stay, these will be augmented by support from cargo previously and subsequently delivered to the site by other vehicles. See, they're planning on bringing a ton of supplies and just dropping it off there, just staging stuff until they started actually putting people out. The mission of the original two men will be primarily one of verification of previous unmanned environmental investigations and confirmation of the site selection and cargo delivery. They even have like a rough sketch of what they wanted the lunar outpost to look like. They even had like airlocks and living quarters. And then they showed like where they want the basic outpost to be designed with 12 people in it, 12 men specifically. They even had like designs for a typical lunar suit, which looked like they had ice skates on them with built-in radiators, antennas, excreta receptacles, I guess for waste. Dude, they had a lot of stuff. They were designing rockets for this thing. They were like, okay, we can use these rockets for these types of tasks. And this is how they're gonna be set up. They're gonna have the first stage, second stage, third stage, fourth stage. And they've got everything broken down in this manual scientifically, like how it's gonna be all set up, you know, where the scientists would be on the orbital return vehicles, the lunar landing vehicles, everything. They went in real, real deep detail with all this stuff. They had ideas for like a lunar communication net between like launch sites and the lunar base and like everywhere on the moon that they would need to be working with, like logistics, where the research and development would be taking place, the different phases that would be completed by. Anyway, so point being, they were planning on making a no joke, full blown military installation on the moon. They were gonna stock it. They're gonna have representation from the military and civil departments of government to provide mutual working relationships with people up there. They're gonna have people that worked on missiles up there. They wanted to set up a lunar outpost, an orbital station, a terrestrial launch site. They wanted to possibly have like field offices at different locations for supporting the entire thing. It was gonna be in depth. Obviously this thing became unclassified. It didn't actually happen. And it would have cost billions and billions and billions billions of dollars. At the time, like I said, this was the height of the Cold War. The competition between the Soviet Union and America was peaking. The space race was peaking. And we were trying to beat them at everything because we had to maintain the upper hand. That's why I think they planned this out originally. Anyway, that is the craziest story I've seen in a while. I don't know if anyone's heard of this story before. If anybody knows any particular specifics about this story that were crazy, let us know in the comments. I'd be curious to hear if anybody's heard of this or heard of anything that's super wild pertaining to this. Hope you enjoyed this video and we will see you guys in the next video. Until next time, see ya.